I've been doing this for quite some time and, and, and I'm really privileged to have the opportunity to go out and see as an auditor to go out and see how other groups, whether it's um, you know academic medical centers or sponsors or CROs, investigators, as sort of government agencies are working in this space. And I think it's really important that we all learn from each other. So I just had a large group, a very diverse group, doing advanced GCP training. And you know, you always learn when you go out and, and look at some of the changes. We had a lot of folks from GMP, and they were talking about medical devices and what their expectations are and how we really are merging the GMP into GCP, which is part of that quality approach. So Michael Maccarelli in CDRH 15 years ago now, uh, just about, said, why are we not taking the quality that we put into manufacturing medical devices under 21 CFR 820 and applying it to clinical? So we pulled out some of those quality by design techniques and, and things of that nature and thought, hey, we we'll use CAPAs and, and root cause analysis and management, but we still have mm, a disconnect, in, in my opinion, or my experience rather, uh, a disconnect in looking at how we really apply this to GCP. Uh, people that don't really understand it, where people don't really understand corrective and preventive action planning. So we are, it's not just a new note to file, we are using it to build quality in. And there need, there's a process behind it. So what we're going to talk about in this course is looking at the purpose and governing bodies of ICH and ISO and layer that in with the FDA's regulatory requirements. We'll look at the core principles of each of those documents, ISO 14155-2011 and ICH E6R2. We'll look at similarities and differences in the content and approach and look at additional sources of information. And one of the concerns that medical device folks have years and years ago, people enjoyed working with devices because they felt they weren't really held accountable to much. You had the regulations and that was it. So we have historically, even though we've done medical devices and ICH E6 is written specifically for drugs, we've layered it into what we do. We put it in our protocols because it is scientific and ethical approach for how we conduct human subject research. ISO 14155 adds yet another layer, and we're going to talk about how they are similar as they stand right now, how they are different, and how they do complement one another. It will be interesting to see how more closely aligned they become, or maybe disparate in some areas, when we get those updates. So what is ISO? It's a worldwide federation of national standards, and the U.S. is an ISO member. ISO 14155 2011 was adopted as an American national standard and again it's good clinical practice for medical devices. How do we apply it? How do we use it? And one of the concerns that I have seen as an auditor is that we will see where people cite this in their protocols but because it's a licensed product they don't distribute it. So I've audited multiple studies where it is cited because it is a good standard but then it is not provided or it is not trained to. And because it is licensed, we're not going to be able to obviously just provide that document in these slides. We're just going to pick some highlights and we're going to talk about that. But I strongly encourage you, if you haven't already, to have access to it. You wait for those, those updates. So the international standard looks at good clinical practice for how we design, conduct, record, and report clinical investigations. So it's conduct and oversight of human subject research. And we're looking for safety and performance or efficacy of our medical devices for regulatory purposes. And this would be true through, an, you know, regardless of the pathway you choose for development. Here is the link for the most current version. So ISO specifies general requirements for protecting the right safety and welfare of those human research participants, making sure that we are appropriately conducting this study so that we can rely on the data that's generated. It talks about the responsibilities of sponsors and investigators. 
and it is used by sponsors, investigators, ethics committees, regulatory authorities, and other bodies involved in determining the oversight compliance of human subject research for medical devices.